I am heading to Saskatchewan for a nine hour drive. Have you ever had an idea that you knew would knock the socks off of everyone you love, but for some reason you just didn't know where to begin? That was me. I knew I wanted to write a comedy about a family in Saskatchewan. Why did I ever think I could write? But I had no idea where to begin. So I did that thing that forces me to start by submitting to a playwriting festival that culminates in a read of my script in front of a live audience. My particular family, it's like no matter how ridiculously different we all are, there's a sense of unconditional love that supersedes it all. That was kind of my the impetus, in a way, to write this play about this really broken family. And of course, weave in there these, these threads to a Canadian black history. So this probably would have all been land that was homesteaded by the black settlers that came from Oklahoma. That ties people of color to the land of Canada. That's why I, you know, submitted to Lunchbox and I asked if I could have a workshop and they read my play and they said yes. I have to write this script. Ugh, I do a whole rewrite. It's Why did I ever think I could write? <laughs> you know what my problem is? I think I can do anything. That's my big toxic trait. And then I get myself stuck into positions where I need to do the thing that I think I can do and realize I don't know how to do it. Can't spend me healthy. The artist elixir. Ugh, the pill we all need. Mark, get the thoughts and the ideas flowing. If it's not coffee, it's wine. Which one's more unhealthy for you? Hmm? We're artists. We love it. We love the challenge. If I can get this script done at the end of today, even if it's an ugly draft, but I get like it done, that's my goal. Mm -hmm. Actually, do we want a date tonight? Actually, no. Don't distract me. I have to write a whole script today. I have no idea what irony means, you know, even though it's apparently really important to script writing. What does irony mean? I don't know. Well, it's the opposite of wrinkly. Rebecca is such a hard worker, and she has a um, writing project due pretty soon. And today is the day she can work on writing, so I'm helping her stay focused on the task at hand, pursuing her different artistic disciplines, and taking care of all the chores today. Hopefully, that will be a blessing to help her focus on art. Baby, baby. Oh, my word. It's a lot of food. Yeah, thank you. Right, baby. I got the water filled, emptied the pee bin, washed the dishes, started the laundry, and cleaned out the drain in the sink. So hopefully that can help you work on your writing today. Thank you, baby. Thank you. It's a huge help. Sorry, my brain is like all over the place. Okay. <sighs> Let me take you to the historical landmark in Saskatchewan that had me so absorbed in my play. In 1910, 12 families founded Saskatchewan's first and only African-American farming settlement in the rural municipality of Eldon. These families and others that followed came seeking land and freedom from the racial segregation of their native Oklahoma. In 1911, they built the simple one-room, hewed log meeting house that served as a place of worship and community gathering. The Shiloh Cemetery was established in 1913 as a place for the traditional burial customs. Despite racism that also existed in Canada, these African-American pioneers persevered and became respected members of the community. They are still remembered as the Shiloh people after this rustic log church where they once worshipped. It's absolutely crazy to be on a territory and land that was homesteaded by black pioneers. When we moved to Saskatchewan, we were the only black people around. <laughs> it's crazy, it's really crazy to be here. I'm glad I drove the extra two hours just to come out here. So I wrote a play that's not necessarily about the Shiloh community, but has this family searching for a long lost treasure that may have been buried by one of the settlers who came and settled the Shiloh community. We are house-sitting right now for some lovely friends. 
And it's perfect because I am currently in workshop for a script that I've written called My White Daddy. I know, hilarious title. Let's hope it's a hilarious play. This is my one day off to do just that. And, um, well, I have a cat on my lap and a computer. And which one do you think is getting priority? The cat. You know what would be kind of a good idea? What if I wrote a song? My creative brain is going, you need to go write a song because you haven't written a song in years. Let's go. Even though, what am I going to do with the song that I wrote? Perform it somewhere? <laughs> That's a joke. I don't really do concerts. Rebecca, you can't simply just write a script. How about you write a song instead? There is this hole inside my heart I tried to fill. Created an empty cistern carved out well. I'll pour clear water until it all. Man, I have full respect for songwriters that do this all the time. I feel like I've satisfied the procrastination creative urge that showed up, and I can go back to write. Oh, I woke up early this morning. It is like 6.30. Uh, just so I can quickly get another draft in before I have to hit the road. I got my coffee, which Joel woke up earlier than me and made for me, which, how sweet. I tell you, I lucked out with that guy. Let's go to this workshop. Bye. All right, time for me to face my fears, conquer the world. The hardest part for me as a creative is sharing my work. But in all honesty, collaborating with other creatives only makes the work better. And Lunchbox Theater had put together an incredible team of artists that had me constantly excited to keep writing. Workshops where professional actors, directors, and dramaturgs critique the written work of the playwright is imperative to the writing process. Oh man, I'm feeling so nervous. <gasps> okay, it's okay. It's great, it's exciting. It's exciting that people are gonna read my work. It's the whole point of it. Since a play is meant to be performed, it must be lifted off the page. If you haven't figured it out by now, I have an enormous family, so I have a challenge for you. How many siblings do you think I have? Try to count them all. I'll help you count by tagging as many siblings as I can. Actually, there's too many and it's way too confusing, so good luck. And by the way, no, I did not tag all my siblings. If you guess the correct number in the comments, I'll give you a star. Are you getting wine? Yeah. They're pouring wine? Yeah. Are you gonna get me some? What are you pouring, Emma? Your wine. Which is? Uh, is it It's the most important drink of the entire meal. <laughs> I put beet juice instead of grape juice. <laughs> so some little child out there is getting... Yeah, Anna. Yeah, at least three of them went missing. Some little child is not actually getting real juice, they're getting beet juice. Because Bethany decided to prank the kids. It's funny though. Check it. Don't drink it yet. Any juice? Any juice? By tomorrow, all these seats will be filled. Maybe not all, but some. Some of the seats. Okay, I promise. There's real people here reading my script. And say hello to the lovely faces that are doing so. Hi. <laughs> all right, friends. So tomorrow, happening at the Vertigo Studio, I will be having a live presentation of my play called My White Daddy, happening at 12 o'clock tomorrow, Friday. So, uh... Hey y'all, if you're interested, please be there because I really would love some mums and seats so I can get a sense on if it's even funny. Today is the day. It is presentation day of my play. I've been writing four months 
to get to this point. So I should be incredibly proud, excited, but ultimately I'm extremely nervous. Just trying to calm my nerves by playing piano really badly. What? <laughs> In case you didn't know, Joel is actually an incredible piano player, and this is just him sight-reading. So you've heard enough about my play already, but you have no idea what it's about or what it's even called. So let me tell you, it is called My White Daddy, written by yours truly, and it is about a father who takes his three grown biracial children into the northern of Saskatchewan for a treasure hunt slash camping trip, and, uh, Chaos and Sues. Um, and I'm, I'm here actually because I want to tell you about the amazing cast that I have. I've got Chris Hunt, Phil Sindule, uh Jared Tobias Herring, and Jessica Horkas. Oh, stellar. All led by the amazing Laurel O'Neill. So, please, come on out. And, of course, directed and dramaturged by Clem Martini. I'm excited. finished my show in front of a bunch of people. It was good. They laughed. Some people even said they cried and had the whole gamut of emotions, which was not something I thought would happen. So yeah, I'm ready to let the script be now and move on to another project. All right, we just spent two weeks nearly at a house, house sitting for someone. And now it's back to band life. So packing her up now, cleaning up this house. and. I'm excited to be back. You know, it's nice to have a break every once in a while, but then when you get the chance to like get back into your van or space, it's like, oh yeah, this is an adventurous life and I absolutely love it. All right, we are ready to go. On to another adventure. Thank you so much for following along on the crazy ride that is our creative life. We can't wait to share more adventures with you. Stay tuned as we bring you out to the Canadian Badlands. Curious? Make sure to subscribe!